Hello, people of the world of the internet. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica that will soon house this 2UZ Toyota V8. If you're new and you like to get caught up on why bumper beams make horrible travel pillows, up above my head is a link to something. In 1973, Toyota adopted the Bumperette for five mile per hour crash safety on their Toyota Celica. They're rather large, hideous, and kind of look like a cannon more than anything that's going to save your life. The adoption of the five mile per hour bumpers were actually not for safety. They were to help reduce the cost of minor traffic accidents for vehicles over 2,000 pounds. The first two model years of the RATA chassis Toyota Celica have what was called the smiley bumpers, which is nearly impossible to argue look a ton better than having those giant unsightly blobs sticking out from the front of the car. Yes, I lost my tool. I don't have the thing to undo this. <sighs> Luckily, the changes that Toyota made in the 73 model year with these bumperettes should be fairly easy to reverse since it was kind of an afterthought for them to have to do this to begin with. Aha. That's all it was, is four tack welds? It's funny that the government mandated the manufacturers to add these ugly little blobs at the front and the rear of the vehicles to save you, the consumer, money if you have a crash. But it has to be a specific type of crash because if you hit the corners of the bumper, it doesn't matter. It's just those four little areas in the front and the rear of the car that will protect you, kind of. Done. Ta-da! Because Toyota had to adapt these new regulations mid-life cycle of the first generation of the Celica, there was very minimal that was actually changed. They just used some crappy tack welds and put those things on. What the hell? Oh, it's tinfoil balls. I forgot I stuck those in there. I'm gonna have to get these sandblasted and powder coated. Please disregard the mess. I only have a thousand square feet to work with here. I've actually had these sitting up here for a couple weeks now waiting to show you. But what I have here is the original bumpers back from a chrome shop. It came out better than the original chrome finish. You can see down here on the bottom and then also up at the top, that's where the holes were for the bumperettes to mount to. And you can see right here on the front ones, this weld, there was some half moons cut out that they had to fill where the posts for the bumperettes went. And I had both of those filled in, essentially making a genuine pair of Toyota smiley bumpers, which are unobtainable. Can tell if dirty or strange. Holy crap, how long has that condensation been inside there for? Oh weird, it's actually not condensation. They're dimpled like a little space ball. Is that actually glass? I can't tell. This right here is a bit of, I did, this was unnecessary. I don't know why I cleaned it before I was going to sand it, because then I'm just gonna clean it after I sand it. I almost just kept this as is, but there was a little bit of overspray from the car was painted before, presumably in the 80s. Plus there was some schmoo back here and a couple little nicks, so it's getting black epoxy. I uh, hang this up here. Fred has to spray some black epoxy in the morning, so that works out. Next up on Sarah's House of Arts and Crafts, Stinky Shapes. That was really cringy, I'm sorry. This stuff, which is called jute, is slowly becoming one of my favorite materials to work with when doing automotive restorations, because it makes such a huge difference when you replace it in a car. It kind of looks like one of the baby dinosaurs from Super Mario World, the chocolate planes level, the little blue ones. That. Flop that over like that. That's about as close as I can get it. Tracing this thing out is like the equivalent of a forensic team doing a chalk outline of a dead mummy 2,000 years later in the road. You know what's not possible? Cutting a small circle out of jute with a pair of scissors. Although, this works on cardboard. Grab a socket that I don't care about. Sure. Oh, that goes right about there. Oh, good size. Stuck in there, there you go. Now that I've effectively rendered that socket absolutely useless because it'll never fit over the head of a bolt again, I finished up these pieces Done. and realized I needed some more parts, which I do not have. And the only place that's gonna have them, welcome to day number two, field trip time. Time to find some parts. I have Angel the Explorer here with me today. 
I haven't been to the Poland save for a while and I needed to see if there is any parts on this Lexus LS 400 that just got delivered. Holy crap. <laughs> I guess they had a flat, jeez. How long did they drive like that for? Okay, now that's rare. It was a Mazda Millennia. Wait a minute, there's an intercooler. Oh, it was supercharged. What? It's got a root style supercharger on top of it. A 2.3 liter supercharged V6? What? That is weird. I'm not gonna show you guys everything that's in here. I'll try to just highlight just the stuff that really stands out that's weird. With the exception of random teeter tots. What? There's a TT in the junkyard. Oh, that is terrible. It's a Quattro, but it only has one exhaust tip, so it's a 180 horse version. It still has the engine in it. A B14 200SX. A super minty Paseo. That's worth saving. Fairly complete RX8. That's sad. There's another teeter tot in here. Another black one. Another 180 horse. That's insane. Engine's still in it, too. It's not a Quattro, though. No way. It's a Cressida and it has a 5M in it. I feel like this is turning out to be one of the better trips that we've been to the junkyard as far as weird cars go. Well, just the three door that someone painted with that house paint. <laughs> it's not an all wheel drive one though. Someone stuck a WRX hood scoop on it. 300ZX slick top, old VG30. This old SL Merc, I don't know what model it is. It's got a V8 under the hood. I don't even know what they had back here back then. Where these were like Oh, it's a removal top. These are like 450s, I think. Little S40, is it a five pot? Yep. Long live ocean. There we go. Is this SC400? Or is it, oh, it is a SC400. Do you have the one UZ in you still? It does. Ah, here's a prop rod. <sighs> prop rod. I'm gonna put it somewhere that we don't die. Maybe wedge it right here. I don't know if they, these are front sump or if they're middle sump their middle sump damn i mean this does have a cable throttle body on it but i don't think that helps me at all for my situation ls 400 row 44 gold it just went through every single car in the entire row there is no gold ls 400 there's no ls 400 at all my guess is it was parked in one of these spots and now it's gone i need an oil pickup tube because Toyota no longer produces those for the 1UZ. Big S500 Merc. A little Celica? Yep, stay away from that one. It's a Dodge Monaco. I don't know what's in it. It's like a 360 or a, a 318. I don't know enough about old Mopars to be able to tell. I mean, there's no rust on the inside of the car either. Why is this in here? This car could have been saved. I mean, it's got dents, but it's not rusted. <laughs> It has drum brakes up front. It's so sad that the stuff like this is in here. I wish someone would have saved them. This smells like someone actually took a shit inside this car. It smells like human shit. I don't think that belongs to an aircraft angel. <laughs> <laughs> it says aircraft and it has a button. Maybe when you want to drive, you click this one and when you want to fly, you click that one. Starcraft did the conversions for the old Ford Econoline vans, I think. And depending Mood. on- Mood. <laughs> See what I tell you, there's an Econoline right here. Yeah, it says start. Yeah. Star Quest in there. Star Quest? Yeah. Oh, it's probably the RC Cola version. <laughs> oh, no, it says Star Quest, Star Craft. Yeah. Deji button. Sorry, I had to do that. Is that old LTD? The hell, there's a lamp in it. But no, this is the Mercury version. That has to be fairly rare. A Mercury Zephyr. A Kaiser in a Galaxy. I don't know why these are in a junkyard. Neither one, these should be saved. I don't, I know of Kaiser, but I know very little about Kaiser. I mean, it's got some dings, but the thing that matters is it's solid. There's not giant holes of rust on it. And all the chrome trim and stuff is on here. One, two, three. Yeah, it's a flat six. Flat head straight six. The, it's complete. Like everything is in here. It's obviously deteriorated, but Everything is in here still. Lots of mouse poop in it. It's like a weird kind of lift back. There's all kinds of parts back here. Fuel tank, air cleaner. I mean, the rust is a little worse on this thing down there in the rockers. I don't know. I feel like this should be saved. It's got a bunch of trim pieces in there. The engine is gone on the Galaxy. It even has these little emblems on the top. But yeah, anyone watching this right now, somebody, if you have the ability to, please save these things. The Mark 8? Seven, seven, eight, 
Lexus Lexus 8. These were like a Mach 1 basically, I believe. I struck out. There was only one Lexus in here with a 1UZ and I don't need anything off of it. And there's no Lexus trucks. There's literally no Toyota or Lexus V8 trucks in here. Uh -uh. At all. The people at the junkyard let Angel and I go in the back to see where they were crushing cars. I personally have never watched a car get crushed in person and it's heartbreaking. I, I literally was getting sad because that was someone's brand new car at one point in time and now it's dead. This is a 2UZ V8 oil pickup tube. I was hoping that I could get a 1UZ pickup tube from a front sump. That way it matches up perfect with this 1UZ block skirt. But I think I'm just gonna have to clean this one up and modify it to work with the 1UZ sump pan. So you're probably wondering what the first half of this video is all about and why I did that stuff. And if you're wondering, that's a good question because I'm wondering too. Sometimes these videos are hard to plan out, okay? Picking up where I last left off, pun intended, this area is something that no one is ever going to see, but to just slap seats in a carpet on top of this and leave it a mess is not acceptable whatsoever. And even though most people would never show this in a video, I'm going to. Goodbye, old dust smell. Hit this up a little bit of all-purpose cleaner. I should give it a nicer sheen. Look at the sheen on that. It looks brand new again. It's always a method to my madness. The little dino torches I cut out earlier. Oh, well, that's gonna work perfect. Well, this stuff stinks. Passenger side of his best friend's ride trying to holler at me. Wait, never mind. Some of you have picked up on the fact that I keep the theme of my project car videos on the era of the car which I'm working on. And this being a car from the 70s, these early 90s references might be an Easter egg. Okay. I could cut this out of a chunk of aluminum or steel, but I don't think it, I don't know if it's actually gonna help any. It might just rattle. I mean, this would burn in an instant and anything probably helps. So, field trip time. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. spot on. Flammable fireboard replaced with, I was gonna try to do that a lot smoother than I did. But I just, I just ruined the presentation. Aluminium. Oh yeah. Much better. So if I lay this back down on top of it, man, that, that fits perfect. Aluminium is so soft. I almost don't even need this. Well, it looks about center. You already saw me do this in another video, but there's no magical team of elves doing this stuff off camera. So I have to finish the other side, obviously. How? None of the holes line up at all. Oh because the tabs are offset. I was gonna try to have this thing bolt into place instead of using the OEM tabs, but I just screwed that up, so. Honestly, it's not that big of a weight difference. It's probably only like three times heavier. I'm gonna put some uniform scratch into this. That's a technical term. Oh, these go on way harder on this material than they did the wood. That's actually good. That's probably gonna hold this in place a lot better. Yeah, that will actually probably work. It's weird, there never was a clip on the top, but I'm missing one for the bottom. I have the perfect solution. Adhesive foam, it's about an inch thick, which is 25 millimeters in common sense measure. How did I already get that dirty? Yeah, that center one never had a clip on it. Wow, okay, this actually might work. Ah, there's my missing clip. Sweet, I'm not missing any now. It's so hard to see what I'm doing. Yep, that's lined up. Haha, <laughs> it's all in. 
That's literally perfect. It fits like the original one did. This actually worked out really good and it won't rattle because of the fact that this is gonna be sandwiched with the rear seat. The rear seat bolts in over that. So there actually was no need to have to bolt this panel in. It would be redundant since the seat bolts over it. This video might have seemed a little bit all over the place, but I don't know why I try to avoid doing that in videos because that's real life. That is what happens when you're doing this kind of work on building a car. This stage of a car build is the part that moves the slowest and looks like almost nothing is being accomplished because it's all these little things that are super time consuming, but super critical to do to have a car that doesn't feel like it was built by a drunk person in a shed. I'm trying to make this feel as if it was engineered and built by Toyota with this V8 in it, which is very difficult to do without being a billionaire. The only reason why this is possible for me to do for you guys is because I'm doing 97.5% of the work myself on this car. But hopefully the next video you guys see on this, I'll have some fresh parts from Toyota for it. And then all that's left for the big hurdles is getting the headers fabricated and I gotta get an ECU so I can finish the wiring. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.